Big thank you to Nebula for sponsoring this video. Hi, I'm Bobby Broccoli, and I'm going to explain how I make my videos. The first thing I should mention is that I am not the inventor of the 3D animation style that I use. That was created by sports writer and filmmaker John Boyce. He's been using Google Earth for years, and he's a wizard at what he does. I used Google Earth exactly once for one video series, and since then I've been using the program Blender. Why do I use Blender? Well, it's free, open source, and has thousands of tutorials available for it. All of my Blender knowledge was self-taught through YouTube, advice from friends, and experimentation. There is a bit of a learning curve, but once you get past the initial hump, I think Blender is a super powerful tool for making 3D story videos. But here's the thing, as long as you can move a camera in 3D space, you can use whatever program you like. Maya, Unity, Unreal Engine, whatever you're most comfortable with. This is completely different than how I used to make videos. And most people's reactions when I explain how I do this is, that's nuts. It is not intuitive by any means, but it is the best way i found to do what I do. I want to be clear, this is not an intro to Blender video. I've linked some good ones down below. Rather, this is specifically how I make my videos. Step 1. Planning and writing. Frankly, this is the most time-consuming part. And my best advice, if this is your first video, is to just try anything. You'll see what works and what doesn't, and gradually develop a feel for how to write this sort of video. A lot of my videos use calendars or timelines as a visual anchor, so start there. Figure out what years or months are the most critical, and sketch out possible layouts on paper. I go through so many sketches before I settle on anything. Your video will likely have a rectangular frame, so try and build a layout that fills that frame nicely from a fully zoomed out angle. Because this style uses 3D space, I often brainstorm some sort of variable that can take advantage of the z-axis. In my element video, it's the half-lives of the elements. In the Nortel video, it's the immense size of the stock price, both critical parts of the story being told. And I sort of build the rest of the layout, working backwards from that critical element, filling in empty space around it. I've done this a lot now, and it comes naturally. But if you're making your first ever video, just write anything and worry about the animation later. The part that really throws people off is that when you make a video like this, you have to lock in your script really early. Everything is animated in chronological order, as opposed to traditional editing that can be done in pretty much any order. Since everything exists in one 3D space, it is really hard to make changes to the script midway, because now you have to add an object and you've got a weird continuity error. It's not impossible to make changes, but it is very annoying. So you really want to make sure that you're happy with your script and then lock it in. Now on to step two. Record your script and edit it down into one continuous take in whatever video editor you use. Personally, I like to write in chapters so that I can animate small bits of the script at a time. What we're going to do next is take these audio files into Blender and we're going to animate in sync to your narration. Here's the critical part though. Once you export an audio file, the timing is more or less set in stone. Because I've done this enough, I have a sense for how long I want certain pauses to be. You're not going to get this right on your first try though. So, if you bring an audio file into Blender and you decide to add a couple extra seconds, or maybe you cut a line, just make sure you copy that change in your original video editor so your animation will stay in sync when you render it out later. Step 3. At this stage, I like to start picking out music, but you could do this much later. At a minimum, I definitely choose the music for my intro, outro, or any pivotal moments because I like to tie my animations to those songs. I use royalty-free music from the YouTube audio library, Epidemic Sound, and a handful of other musicians who make their songs free to use. Step 4. Setting up your Blender window. This is all my personal preference, so feel free to tweak this to your liking. On the top, I have two 3D viewport windows. One of them is bigger and usually set to material preview mode. This is the window I actually interact with, moving images around and clicking on things. The other 3D viewport is smaller and is always showing the perspective of my camera object with the final render preview. If you click a camera object and hit zero on your numpad, you'll always jump to what the camera is seeing. 
down below are two separate timelines. The top one is called the dope sheet. Anytime you click on an object, it will show you any keyframes associated with that object. Keyframes store any properties you might care about. Most of the keyframes you'll be concerned with will be things like location, rotation, and scale. You can drag them around freely here, and I often use it to adjust the speed the camera moves at. And finally, down below that is the timeline. This is where we're gonna see your narration and it helps you sync your animation to your voice. Step five, we're gonna bring in your audio files. At the top of the window is a video editing tab. Simply find the audio file you want and drag and drop onto the timeline here. Make sure to select view waveform on the right here so you can see the peaks. I like to keep the music and narration as separate tracks, but that's up to you. This isn't going to be the final audio anyway. Just make sure you click playback and select sync to audio. Step six, the camera object is the backbone of your entire video. You're going to be moving it around your scene and keyframing its location. If you hit zero on your numpad, you'll see the perspective of the camera. And if you go under view and then navigation, you enter into walk mode. You basically get to control the camera like you're playing Minecraft. I use this feature often enough that I assigned it to the shortcut Shift F. So go ahead and move the camera to where you want it to be. Then with the camera object selected, you're going to hit the I key. This is the keyframe menu. You're going to hit location, rotation, and scale. And that's going to save the camera's properties on a given frame. To animate a camera movement, change the frame you're on, move the camera again, and then set a different keyframe. If you hit spacebar to play, you've got a nice camera motion. You're going to do this hundreds of times, so the keyframing menu will become second nature to you. Step seven. Next is to actually add objects to your scene. Blender has dozens of mesh, curve and text objects right at your disposal built into the interface. And you can make pretty much anything you can imagine with all of those. But the bread and butter of my videos tends to be images. I use one Blender add-on more than any other, and that is import images as planes, which you can turn on in your preferences menu. Simply go to file, import, images as planes. First, you choose the image file. Then you choose one of three lighting properties. Principled means it takes on the lighting of the scene. Shadeless will make it ignore the scene lighting. And emit will make it produce its own light. Click OK and your image will be in the scene as a plane. You can do whatever you want with this. Scale it using the S key. Rotate it using the R key. And move it using the G key. Just make whatever collage of images you want. Step nine. You may want to animate the images appearing and disappearing. This is really easy. Just select the image and move to the frame you want it to appear on. Hit the I key and keyframe it. Next, use the left arrow key to move back exactly one frame. Hit S for scale, then zero, then enter. The object now has zero size and is invisible effectively. Hit I again and keyframe it. Now the object appears as if out of nowhere, exactly when you want it to. You can play with this however you want. Maybe you want it to come in from off screen. Maybe you want it to appear slowly, growing. Whatever you want, keyframing is your friend. And finally, rendering your animation. That's essentially all the basics. Go to the scene tab and set things like your resolution, frame rate, and save location. I recommend rendering as an image sequence, that way if your render crashes for some reason, you don't lose all your progress. You can now import that image sequence back into your original video editor. And because you animated in sync to your voice, there's very little work left. It'll probably be around 95% accurate, and you just need to make a few tweaks here and there. You're basically done. Now, all of that that you just heard, those are the basics. 
there are a lot of ways to upgrade what I just showed you. Here are some of my advanced tips. Tip number one, how do I do something? Just search YouTube for it and add the word blender. I cannot stress this enough. All of my videos are a collage of other people's tutorials. For example, how do I make a corkboard texture? How do I make a neon grid animation? How do I make a cool sunset? Everyone in the Blender community is extremely helpful and friendly, and more often than not, someone has had your exact question before. Tip number two, the render engine. Blender has two main render engines. The first is Eevee. This is the low performance engine that the average computer can run. It's what I use to make all of my previous Blender videos. Lighting effects and textures are all really simple, and your scenes should render reasonably quickly. The other engine is Cycles. Cycles is much more demanding on your hardware, and you probably want a good GPU to do this. It has realistic lighting and textures, and pretty much every scene looks amazing in Cycles with very little effort. The trade-off is render times are immense. Tip number three, vectors. If you have a nice, smooth vector icon, Blender has built-in support for SVG files. I use this all the time instead of image files if the icon just needs to be one color, because vectors scale perfectly. You can import them as a curve, but they can then be converted into mesh objects and you can apply whatever modifiers to them you want. Don't be afraid to use royalty-free assets. There are tons of websites where 3D artists share their assets, many of them free, but even the paid ones are super affordable. The poker table and chips in my cloning video were paid assets, and even though I probably could have made them myself, it saved me a few days of work, and they probably looked better. And finally, tip number five. Blender is a procedural animation software, meaning you can automate a lot of cool things. Here are some examples. This corkboard material uses a noise pattern to create an endless procedural texture. The map of Waxahachie in my Super Collider series was actually made using a free add-on called Blender OSM. You just select a section of the earth, and then it does all the work for you. It imports a mesh object of the entire map. Genuinely astounding how easy it is. All I did was make it a rainbow. Blender is also fully compatible with Python scripting. The Nucleide C in the Ninov video was made using a script I wrote. I made a CSV file of all the element sizes, names, and their half-lives, and I made a for loop that creates a separate mesh object and labels for each of them. I even had them assign a different material color based on their height. There was no way I'd ever have been able to do this manually because it was thousands of objects. Blender also has a relatively new feature called GeoNodes, which are crazy powerful and I've just barely scratched the surface with. There how I made the animated graph segments in my Nortel video. It can take a CSV file of data and generate a bar graph far more efficiently than making a separate cube for each data point. That one I got a lot of help with from one of my viewers, Chris Hanel, who also does sports videos. You should definitely check out his stuff. Still feeling pretty intimidated? Well, the good news is that I have a bunch of pre-made Blender files to get you started, and you can get access to them through Nebula. Nebula is the creator-owned streaming service I'm a part of, alongside some of the best thoughtful creators on the internet. There you can watch my videos and many more completely ad-free. Not only do I post my videos two weeks early there, but you can also find dozens of Nebula originals not found anywhere else. For those of you who are eager to start making your own videos, I can't recommend Nebula classes enough. Each class is hosted by a fellow Nebula creator, and there's one for every part of the video making pipeline. If you want more tips on effective research skills, this class by Tom Nicholas is a must. I often have to track down really old clips or articles behind paywalls, and this class has great advice for navigating academic databases. If you love the graphs in my videos, maybe check out this class by Simon Clark on turning data into stories. It's easy enough to plot a bunch of points, but Simon breaks down how to craft a compelling narrative from something as simple as a pie chart. On the other hand, audio has never been my strong suit, so this class by Graham Herther was a huge help to me. I live in an extremely noisy apartment, and this class had great advice for fixing both my recording environment and my post-processing. I know that the hardest part of making a video is taking that first step, and so I've prepared a set of Blender project files for you to play around with. 
Do you want to mess around with the periodic table or a model of a super collider? Well, now you can. You get access to all this and more by signing up with my link. With it, you get a 40% discount on an annual subscription, all for just $2.50 a month. And a significant chunk of that money goes directly to me for as long as you're subscribed, which will help me make bigger and better brockumentaries. Support me and many others by signing up for Nebula today. As always, thanks for watching.